Okay, so this is how it works. Governments issue debt instruments called bonds, gilts, or treasuries, depending on the market. Most of them are fairly long dated, like 10 years or so, although there are some that trade at shorter durations. They pay a fixed coupon or interest amount every six months normally, and then at the end you get your principal investment bank. Okay, so these instruments are bought by pension funds, insurance companies, banks, and other long-term investors who like the safety that they offer because of who issues them, and the regular steady payouts. And remember, when you talk safety, governments make these coupon payments using tax revenues. And you know what? They own the prisons that they put you into if you don't pay your taxes. So that's why people are comfortable that they'll be able to have the cash flow to meet their obligations. The higher the perceived credit worthiness of the issuer, the government, the state in question, then the lower the yield that is offered on the bonds. Okay, so let's look and see what that looks like on a graph. This is the European issuers and everybody has been worried about them in particular. You can see the Germans are down here, they look good. They only have to pay like 3% on their bonds and everybody's lapping them up. The Europeans uh, are, you know, are get the spread, but the United States is also down around there, notwithstanding everybody's anxieties. And then South Africa would be somewhere in between here, issuing bonds at around the 7 8% level. And then countries like Greece, you can see from here about 2010, they go through the roof. Nobody wants to buy these things. Their debt issues start to get very unattractive. And that's where they start looking to the European Central Authorities for some kind of a bailout. Right. Investors are worried about countries like Greece defaulting on their debts. In other words, just saying, sorry, chaps, we're not going to pay these off at all. Now, this would cause a major knock-on effect default because it would drag down those pension funds, insurers and banks, which I mentioned earlier, that are mostly the owners of the bond. They in turn would have these problems. But here's the thing, and here's the money line. These days, it's only countries that don't really form a proper part of the global economy, like, you know, Venezuela or Zimbabwe or the Ivory Coast, which are going to actually default, where, you know, Ivory Coast, for example, recently just called it quits because of the political uncertainty. For most civilized countries like Greece, which are, by civilized, I don't mean that in a disparaging way, that are part of the global economy, part of the European Union, that have bonds which are owned by foreign players in the first place, it's almost always going to be better for them to reorganize their affairs, restructure a bit, raise taxes, do a little bit of a wriggle, reschedule some of their more expensive debt, and do some kind of a workout. The point is because a default, which is just like dropping a nuclear bomb, never works for anyone, doesn't work for the country issue, it doesn't work for the people holding the debts. So you heard it here first. In a few years time, we will have wriggled out of all of these issues, solutions will have been found, this issue about sovereign default, not gonna be with us, and you shouldn't be basing your investments on the assumption that it is.